Good morning and welcome to Epiphany. This is Pentecost Sunday, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the church. And I want to welcome all of you here today to Epiphany. Um, and again, as this we will learn today, this is about the time when various languages were spoken um, in Jerusalem on this Pentecost Sunday. So in the words of my ancestors, paiva paiva, quicka semena, which means in Finnish, Good morning, good morning, and welcome, and how are you? So, again, great to have you with us here this morning. However you're gathering with us, whether it's by computer or laptop or your iPhone, or if you're just on the telephone, we are so delighted and happy that you are with us here today. And now, as we've shared, but hear these words of welcome. No matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Welcome to our first-time guests. Welcome to those who have no church home, need strength, have doubt, want to follow Christ, or even do not believe. Welcome to those who were baptized here and have worshipped in this space for generations. Welcome to people of all sexual orientations and gender identities, to people of all racial and ethnic heritages, and to families of every shape and size. You are not just welcome but you are celebrated, embraced as you are. Amen. I'd just like to bring forward a couple of announcements that we have for, the, for this week. Um, the blood drive, yes, Pastor Kevin, I signed myself up for the blood drive, so you will get the last pint of blood from me, I guess as it were. And, uh, but the, again, that'll be the blood drive on Saturday, May 29th. Um, there's still availability, you can sign up via the web page. And if you come around 1 o'clock, you'll have the opportunity to see myself and Lenore. Uh, we pl both plan to be there about that time. Just a reminder, too, that June is coming up, and it marks the return of the annual Ask the Pastor sermon series. And I know that Pastor Kevin is busily sharpening his pencils or uh, charging up his iPad to think about what ideas to put together. So he would welcome questions about faith or things that are faith-related or a scripture passage that has intrigued you and, uh, and maybe just something that would be maybe strengthening or reaffirming to you during this time. I want to also share that uh, about the Fritz Siegfried Music Fund. And again, over the next few weeks, uh, we'll be asking for your help for replenishing the music fund. And this helps pay for the parts of our music fund, including some of our gifted vocalists that we have here, Justine and Tim, but also please consider giving via our website. It's, uh, it's a line item on the donation page. You can find that there. And thank you for your support of our church's music program, which has been so uh, such a blessing over this past year. And I have really appreciated their gifts as they've been shared with us. The novel called Banishing Half will be our all-church summer book read. And we'll gather to discuss the book on August 12, 2021. Uh, more information will be coming soon, but uh, keep your eyes open. Don't be like a seminarian and try to read it all the two days before the, the thing is due. You know, give yourself some time, enjoy, and luxuriate in the book. Also, we want to remind you that uh, this week coming up is uh, significant because there are some anniversaries that are taking place um, a year ago and also in the terms of the lives of African Americans a hundred years ago. And I want to just bring forward that there will be an outdoor ecumenical prayer service on the anniversary of George Floyd's uh, death at St. Ben's Catholic Church on Tuesday, May 25th at 4.30 to 6 p.m. Some members of Epiphany will be there, and I would ask you that you consider joining that, this event. Uh, it's an important event at this time to be together, to stand with those friends of ours um, who have dealt with so much in this past year. Uh, there is the fellowship time on Zoom, which was immediately after the service, after the postlude. And uh, there isn't really so much a question, but this is an opportunity, I'm hoping, for me to give you a little bit of information about what's next steps for me. Um, off, let me offer some reflections about my year here, but I would also welcome those questions or thoughts or maybe things that have stood out to you this year because it's, it's been my honor to be here at Epiphany serving as your intern pastor, interim intern pastor. So with that, let us gather our hearts. Let us worship God who gives us the spirit. 
the very presence of the divine within us. Amen. Spirit of life, your breath of life fills the whole world and holds all things together. If you withdrew your breath, everything turned to dust. Breathe, Breathe on me, breath, breath of God. God. You are the source of life that brings life to the world. Whole life, full life, unhindered, indestructible, everlasting life. Fill, Fill me with, with life anew. anew. The life of your spirit which Christ sends into the world is the power of the resurrection which brings us new life. Breathe, Breathe on me, breath, breath of God. The sending of your spirit is the revelation of God's indestructible affirmation of life and marvelous joy. Fill, Fill me, me with, with life, life anew. anew. Jesus, where you are, there is life. Where you are, sick people are healed. Sad people are comforted. Marginalized people are accepted, and the demons of death are driven out. Breathe, Breathe on me, breath, breath of God. Where your Holy Spirit is present, there is life. The powers and energies of eternal life are experienced. Fill, Fill me, me with, with life, life anew. anew. The mission of your Spirit is a movement for life and a movement for healing, which spreads consolation and the courage to live and raises up what wants to die. Breathe on me, breath of God. We affirm and love life so much that we protest against death and all the powers that disseminate death. Fill me with life anew. Help us to join with your comforting of the sad, healing of the sick, welcoming of strangers, and forgiving of sins. Breathe on me, breath of God. Send your spirit so that this world should not perish but live. Fill, Fill me, me with, with life, life anew. Spirit of the new creation, break into the here and now, bringing foretastes of the age to come, when all things are made new and creation is set free from the powers of death. Breathe, Breathe on me, breath, breath of God. God. Spirit of God, renew the face of the earth. Fill, Fill me, me with, with life anew. anew. 
Give us hearts of flesh for hearts of stone, that we may love as you would love and do what you would do. Amen. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. The second reading for today is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 26. I say, be guided by the Spirit, and you won't carry out your selfish desires. A person's selfish desires are set against the Spirit, and the Spirit is set against one's selfish desires. They are opposed to each other. So you shouldn't do whatever you want to do. But if you are being led by the Spirit, you aren't under the law. The actions that are produced by selfish motives are obvious, since they include sexual immorality, moral corruption, doing ever what feels good, idolatry, drug use, and casting spells, hate, fighting, obsession, losing your temper, competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness, group rivalry, jealousness, drunkenness, partying, and other things like that. I warn you, as I have already warned you, that those who do these kinds of things won't inherit God's kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like this. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the self with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, Let's follow the Spirit. Let's not become arrogant, make each other angry, or be jealous of each other. Powerful Spirit, gentle Spirit, world-moving Spirit, heart-transforming Spirit, help us to hear your word among these many words. Open our 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 hearts, hearts, open our ears, ears, and and open open wide our spirits spirits to your your truth. truth. Amen. Amen.
I ask that you take a moment here to center your thoughts on this day of Pentecost. Would you please join me in prayer? May the Spirit of God who moved those to profess the good news kindle flames of love eager to share and embrace what the Spirit reveals in today's speaking. Amen. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, goodness, patience, kindness, tenderness, faithfulness, self-control. Against there is no law. Now, that's a little tunedly I learned long ago. I, maybe it have been Bible camp or uh, some Sunday school program. I'm not really sure where it came from, but it's one of those tunes that has stuck with me throughout my life. And yeah, sometimes it becomes that kind of that earworm that's in your ear and uh, it just stays there. It's not one of those annoying ones, but it's something that just is always seems to be present. So how do I weave this little tune about the fruits of the Spirit with this festival of Pentecost? Well, one thing that seems to prompt this for me is tune is encountering vegetables and fruits on display. Um, sometimes it might be at the Jewel or Trader Joe's or Whole Foods, but I especially notice it at farmer's markets. You know, there, are, there are several not too far from uh, where Lenore and I live in Rogers Park, and there's the Glenwood Market, and then there's Evanston's Farmer's Market. And then that's just to name a few. But that does not matter where. It, it is the variety and abundance that is seen I must admit, I know there were so many varieties of heirloom tomatoes, let alone cherries and squash and cucumbers and carrots and onions and lettuce and, oh, the list goes on and on and on. Each seems to have its unique traits and popularity with certain people. I personally can't wait until the peaches arrive. You know, especially those yellow peaches from Michigan. As a matter of fact, the peach would have been the fruit I would have been tempted to eat Eden, not the apple, I'm, I'm just saying. But does, what does organic gardening, farming, have to do with Pentecost and tongues of flames and people speaking in multiple languages and what are we to do with all the spiritual fruit that Paul mentions? I suggest that we take a look at a couple of things from our reading this morning. The first is the account of this day of Pentecost and the presence of the Holy Spirit and what is it saying to us today? And I'd like to look at uh, what is the purpose of the Spirit's presence in my sermon title reference as pneumatological farming and how does this account for the fierce howling wind and tongues of fire. Lastly, if we look closer at the context of Galatians and Paul's guidance to the church, we begin to see the abundance of these fruits of the Spirit are all about. From our reading earlier today, we see in verse 1, that this is already an established holiday, a feast day for the Jews. It celebrated the spring harvest, but it also celebrated the giving of the law to the people of Israel, the Pentateuch, the Torah, the first five books of Moses. The Jews called it the Feast of the Harvest or Feast of Weeks. This is a holiday celebrated by the Jews who would make the pilgrimage back to Jerusalem, and it generally falls in late May and early June time frame. And this is how the Jews identified with their faith. And it's, it is this festival that the church now identifies with its birthing. If you read further in Acts 2, the church seems to launch itself as good news spreads like fire driven by the wind, as thousands, thousands are converted on that first day. This is a day that is announced with a howling of a fierce wind, and there's a disruptive announcement, one that disrupts the hud homogeneity of the small group because of an expanding diversity that will spread throughout the world. This is an unleashing of the Spirit that continues today, challenging people to limit where the Spirit can move. Are we, willing, are we welcoming of where this planting the Spirit may take place? Are we willing to broaden it out? So what does this have to do with organic versus pneumatological farming? If you grant me a few moments to explain, I trust you'll see some semblance to farming practices with the nurturing of these spiritual fruits. 
The word pneumatology comes from the two Greek words pneuma or pneumatos, which means wind and fire and spirit. And then also logos, which means word or teaching about. When combined, this means the study of the Holy Spirit. And here in Acts 2, we see depicted in the sound of the mighty rushing wind and the tongues of flame that are lit on those gathered. The immediate and apparent bearing of the Spirit's presence is the ability to speak in the native languages of those gathered in Jerusalem for Pentecost. Remember, this is a Jewish festival, and we see it here if we read further into the second chapter of Acts, that Jews are coming from all over the Roman Empire and beyond. These gifts, these are not the gifts of tongues employed by our Pentecostal cousins for the edification of the church. Instead, it manifests itself in the gospel of the good news and is moving beyond the Hebrew and Aramaic languages. It is not people understanding Hebrew or Aramaic. Instead, it is the diversity of languages going out. So the good news of God's love is heard in languages of others, languages of the Gentile nations tied to those of the Jewish faith traditions that were present. It is in showing that the good news is moving out beyond the Hebrew language. Remember the Tower of Babel, that's the count that's in Genesis, where the story of all the languages originates? And the people are building the tower, and then the people are dispersed globally because they're unable to communicate. But instead of drawing them back to one language, this account shows God's love is for every tongue and ear to hear. It is the gift of proclamation inspired by the Holy Spirit that sends the followers of Christ out into the world it is the gift of love and the truth about God's love for everyone wherever they are at. This will be shared in the future stories we encounter in Acts as we move through out the book of Acts. And as we remember in Acts, we see the Holy Spirit baptizing Cornelius, who's a Roman centurion in his household without the need for converting to the Jewish laws. Or the Spirit sent Philip to Ethiopian eunuch, which we heard about a couple of weeks ago. The Spirit moves throughout Acts, and this is the account of how the church will grow. These are actions and words of inclusion, not exclusion. The, the church is open to all. Last week, Pastor Kevin shared from Galatians the issues that were taking place between the Christians, those of the Jewish faith, and those who are Gentiles. The argument was about whether or not one first had to become Jewish and follow the laws, including circumcision, to become a Christian. Is a person bound to the law, or is it the freedom to embrace the good news, regardless of the culture or language? Here in this reading from Galatians 5, we find Paul preaching freedom from law in verse 19. But this is not freedom without limits. The freedom does not mean anything goes, and it is not the freedom we love to embrace here in the America of individuality and the autonomy, autonomy and self-determination. It is the freedom holding us responsible, regardless of our perceived status, that we are dead to our selfish desires and passions, but we are alive through the spirits and following the spirits where the spirit produces these fruits. Now, further on yet, as we read in verse 19, there is a list that is put out of selfish motives. It's a conventional list of behaviors that are not life-bearing, though not exhaustive. It begins with three terms identifying sexual offenses, continues with two words or terms about idolatry or the magical occult practices, Includes with, and concludes with two terms for self-indulgent partying. However, it seems to build on eight words in particular in verse 20 that bring out dissension and community-destroying actions. Those words are hate, fighting, obsession, losing your temper, competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness, group rivalry, and jealousy. While many of us would like to take the whole list and make it a morality litmus test for those entering the kingdom of God, I believe it is a call to be aware of those things that destroys the community. Paul's letter to the church in Galatia is focused on unity and peace. And Paul has been arguing against the requirements of the law for those not bound to the law. Charles Cusar, 
who is a Samuel A. Cartilage Professor Emeritus of the New Testament at Columbia Theological Seminary, shares that Paul understands that all human beings are free in some sense and enslaved in some sense. The question is, from what or whom are they free and to what or whom are they enslaved? In Galatians, he urges freedom from the law, but that same freedom carries with it enslavement to Christ as liberator and also to others who belong to Christ. We are in obligation to Christ, but practically to each other. We as a community gain freedom as Christ calls us to serve one another with the acts of the Spirit as laid out by Paul. This ties back to Christ's commandment that we love our neighbors as ourselves, or even our UCC motto that they all may become one, they all may be one. Last week we read in Galatians that there is no Greek or Jew, male or female, slave or free. Yet here we are, finding ourselves slaves to one another. We are all free to love, but love is bondage. To love someone is not to allow them to suffer and to treat them with compassion kindness, and grace, those fruits of the Spirit. When you love someone, you cannot sit unaffected while they are harmed. If you exercise that freedom to do so, you can no longer claim to love that person. There is no indwelling of the spiritual fruits being borne out in actions and lives. How can we foster the growth, growth of these fruits in each other? Well, interestingly, so this is a differentiation between the certified organics and other produce. Sometimes I can't tell the difference. I am not saying that organic is not worth pursuit and not a worthy pursuit. I often choose organic fruits, especially those grown locally, because I know the efforts to ensure they are organic. And I am not lost on the irony that organic has to be certified. That is it is free of unnatural, genetically modified organisms, or that is unaided by commercial fertilizers or pesticides or other toxins. The soil that they are grown in has to go through rigorous testing process, and this often takes years of natural composting, removing those unnatural elements, and regenerative process of ensuring the sources of water, seed, and other aids all meet organic requirements. If you want the mass-produced and harvested fruits and vegetables are the ones that seem to be more questionable in their practices. At creation, we are reminded the Spirit moved over the waters as we are reminded during the sacrament of baptism. It is the Spirit, the breath of God, the Ruach in Hebrew, giving humankind life and nourishing our flourishing. As the creation story continues, Eden is the abundance of all things that are good to eat and sustaining of life. Yet, when Adam and Eve are cast from the garden, the story of farming becomes a more laborious task. It is toiling to make the conditions of ground favorable for producing fruit like those in Eden. From this story of the fall, the law is eventually established to return humanity back, to restore their, their relationship with their love relationship with God. However, the law with humanity's added interpretations can become moralistic in defining and limiting life-nurturing processes. It is almost as if that which was organic needs to prove itself worthy. To grow produce organically takes work. It takes a love of the process of nurturing and caring and waiting for the harvest. It requires biodiversity and interdependence with other organic life. The work is long-suffering and intensive, and the yield is healthy, but not necessarily financially rewarding. Yet, if organic farming is not your choice, there is always the option to introduce alternatives like herbicides and pesticides and fertilizers and other chemicals that promote higher yields. It also removes the biodiversity by focusing on monoagriculture. If you're looking for higher profits and less intensive farming requirements required by a single crop like corn or soybeans or avocados or whatever drives a high market demand, if you are looking for exclusivity and a non-divergent faith with others, 
perhaps you should not even try gardening or nurturing the fruits of the Spirit to begin. To be part of a nurturing, caring, producing community requires biodiversity, the variety of all peoples worthy of God's love. It does not focus on mono-agricultural systems with personal preferences sprayed like toxins to kill invasives or destroy those people who are perceived as weeds. The church we see coming forth in the story of Pentecost is not a church of monocultures. It is spreading, cross-pollinating, and bringing life to communities needing to hear the good news. The diversity is found in the pouring out of the Holy Spirit for the good of all creation. It is the diversity that I find here at Epiphany. Many call Pentecost the birthday of the church. And I appreciated my history professor at Garrett, who also refers to it as the baptism of the church. Here, the Spirit is baptizing them with wind and flames. And we recall earlier that in our narrative lectionary that John the Baptist speaks of his baptizing with water, but the one who was coming will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And just as we pour the water into the baptismal font and we bring those seeking membership, we ask them to profess their faith in baptism. And we stand with them, reaffirming our own baptisms. This is a time of inclusion, not exclusion. We are a people uniting as we affirm our baptisms, as stated in the United Church of Christ Book of Worship. Friends in Christ, we all are received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. We have found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. Through prayer and study, we are led by the Holy Spirit to affirm our baptisms and to claim our covenantal relationship with Christ and with members of the church. We are here at Epiphany for services to Jesus Christ using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. While I have been here at Epiphany this year, we have not baptized anyone, partially due to the pandemic and not meeting in person. Yet I have met many virtually and socially distanced individuals who exhibit spiritual gifts and fruits nurtured in this baptism. I have seen the gifts of kindness, gentleness, patience, joy, peace, self-control, goodness in the community meal, in those participating in Bible study, the book discussion groups around justice and addressing white privilege, the faithfulness of those who gather weekly virtually and you for gathering virtually for services to record and to those who record and edit the services for special occasions and our youth who faithfully participated socially distanced throughout the year with our whole lives program. Yet most amazingly through all these and yes even the church meetings and other groups the prayers offered the prayers were offered and the times I have had the opportunity to spend some time one-on-one, -on -one, love has always been there. Do not doubt, you faithful loved ones here at Epiphany, God's Spirit is at work within you. And the world you encounter, even now, you are producing fruit, feeding those souls that are often outcast or forgotten. You are people who have a rich history here in this building, but you are not the congregation that has kept it in. The words spoken at this pulpit or at the table or the font are words I believe include all. You have welcomed all by the statement we open our services with each week. It is a statement that I would encourage that we should read as, you are welcome, I am welcome, everyone is welcome. The Spirit has been present in the waters, the wind, and the flame. Waters that have baptized infants and adults. Waters we have washed our hands to prevent the spreading of the pandemic. The wind of uncertainty and the fires that seem to swirl about us, stirring many of you to action. The winds to move social justice and issues around Black Lives Matter. 
winds that are blowing against misogyny and white supremacy and xenophobia and violence against people of color and ethnicity. Fires to fuel you to no longer remain silent or complacent to what is taking place in our community, our nation, and the world. I pray that these baptisms will nurture those fruits within you to continue to produce. This is Pentecost, the day of celebrating the Holy Spirit. It is the spring harvest. It is celebrating the birthday of the church through the baptism of the Spirit. It is also the day for celebrating the fruits you are bearing forth in the world today. I can testify that they are organic. It comes from within, freed through the love of Christ's death and resurrection and nurtured by the Holy Spirit to reach out to all. Happy birthday, church. Happy birthday, Epiphany. Even now, remember your baptism, the union we share with each other through the Spirit, a union proclaiming good news to all who want to listen and fosters growing those fruits the world hungers for each day. May the Holy Spirit fill the sanctuary, your homes, and your lives with God's incomprehensible love now and forever. Amen. I ask that you join me in the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Our holy God, who speaks through water, wind, and flame, be with us as we, your people, come to you, seeking your spirit to fill our lives with life-giving fruit. Forgive us, we pray, for those times when we intercede where we do not know what is being cultivated where we bring our limited experiences of life to determine what is best grown in the lives of others and ourselves. Forgive us for believing that we as creatures know better than the Creator what our life-bearing and sustaining practices of mercy, justice, and grace. In these moments of silence, may we allow your Spirit to purge those thoughts and practices, robbing your abundance of goodness for all creation. Hear the good news. We are forgiven and are called to bear those fruits of self-control, faithfulness, gentleness, kindness, goodness, patience, peace, joy, and love. May we embrace the redemptive grace that allows us to return to fertile soils of God's abundant grace so that we can produce fruits so all may live in the fullness of God's love. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, there were tongues of flame. People gathered close in an upper room. When the Spirit of the Lord came upon them like the wind, and the people spoke and prayed in many tongues to praise God's name. 
proclaiming, go and preach the name of Jesus everywhere. Go speak the predica in nome de Jesus in todas. Vai predica in nome de Jesus in todas. Vai habla fe in cada país. Vai predica in nome de Jesus ovunque. Vai e dir la fe in ogni país. Go and preach the name of Jesus everywhere. Go tell the faith to all in every. And the Holy Spirit filled all the people there, speaking many tongues in the rush of air. And the sound that filled the air made a joyful noise in prayer as the wind and flaming sounded, praising Jesus everywhere. Proclaiming, go and preach the name of Jesus everywhere. Go share the good news, go share the story, go share the gospel in the tongue of everyone. La, 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 la. In the tongue of everyone in every land. Thank you. You know, I'm just always amazed at the gifts of the Spirit that come through our music in this time. Thank you so much. Friends, we uh, begin our portion of this service in a time of prayer, and I would ask that you uh, settle your spirits and focus on the living Spirit within you and within the world as we ask God for healing, for hope, for goodness, for grace. I do want to share with you before I begin a piece of news, two pieces of news this morning. Uh, some of you may already know that uh, Barb Bolson has been struggling with trying to figure out what kind of cancer uh, over the last, that she has over the last year or so. And this week she did find out that finally there is a diagnosis of ovarian cancer uh, this past Thursday. So I invite you to pray for her as she goes through a couple of rounds of chemo, some other surgery, and then also some chemo as well. Let us hold her up in prayer, and uh, we will find ways to support her in this journey in the coming months as well. Another piece of news, uh, very sad news. Um, I want to share with you that Mary Brown's husband, who uh, was not a member here or particularly active here, but did every once in a while come and see us, um, died by suicide this past week on Thursday. Uh, he was a man who struggled with mental illness. I invite your prayers for Mary and her family and for the larger family and for all those who are struggling with mental illness. Um, may God's spirit reach them and be with them during this time. So I invite you to join me in prayer. As we pray, I say, Lord, in your mercy and in whatever setting you find yourself, I invite you to say, hear our prayers. Gracious and living God, we are a people who know of crucifixion. We know what it means at times in our lives to feel the weight of nails pounded into our arms, into our hands, into our lives, into our hearts. We are people who are in need of your healing and your hope. And we are also people at times who have cried out like your Savior, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And yet you remain. And yet you grieve with us. And yet the sky turns dark, and you are there, crying with us, grieving with us, allowing our anger to manifest itself at all the unfairness of what is. You are not a God who walks away. 
Gracious God, we ask for your healing, emotional, physical, spiritual healing for those that we name in this moment. We pray for Barb Bolson as she deals with ovarian cancer, for Larry Farwick as he rehabs after hip surgery, for Joan Buck and her struggle with mental illness, for Simon Garcia and his physical maladies, for Angela, a friend of Margaret's who is in hospice care, for Lee, Louise Peterson's brother Thomas and for Louise herself for healing, prayers of healing for Penny's daughter-in-law, Rahelia, and for Clarice, Penny's sister, who has not been doing well. We pray for Carol, one of our staunch welcome meal guests who is dealing with eye issues and other health issues. Continued prayers for Bren Raraki as she recovers from surgery. Prayers for Ginny Maddox, who finds herself once again confined to Paul House with no visitors. We ask that, that you give her peace and patience as we await Paul House no longer being uh, shut down. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray for those who have died and the family and friends who mourn them. Especially on this day, we pray for Mary Brown, whose husband, Greg, of course, died on Thursday. Prayers for all the boys and for the larger family. May you be present with them in ways known and unknown. We pray for the family of Margaret's nephew who lost a brother-in-law after a long battle with cancer. We pray for the family and friends of Robin Eudicus who passed away a few weeks ago. And may all those who have died know a holy rest in you, you who resurrect us out always into new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the world, for peace and justice in Israel and Palestine, for the people of Myanmar and Yemen, and for the people, the, the Uyghurs and the Muslim minority in China, and for all people who are persecuted for their faith, Christian or otherwise. We pray for all those being infected by COVID-19 without the resources to meet that challenge, especially in Brazil and India. We pray for those who are victims of gun violence in Chicago and elsewhere. We pray for all those still dealing with COVID-19. And we pray for racial justice that is always meant to begin with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray for the church, for the church universal, all churches, and all churches in particular, and for this congregation Epiphany as we seek to be faithful to God, as they seek to be faithful to God. Holy One, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We thank you for the good gift of your Christ who always seems to find a way to meet us in our need. When words vanish, when they escape us, when they abandon us, even then you are faithful and you give us the words your Christ taught us thousands of years ago saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us, us from, from evil. evil. For, For thine is the kingdom and the, the power, power and, and the glory, glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us continue our worship in song. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You moved on the waters, you called to the and coaxed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep. And over the eons you call to each thing. Awake from your slumbers and rise. 
eyes on your wings. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, turn me from lastness, wind, wind on the the journey, my friends. This is a tradition in our church, at least in the last 10 years or so, when those who leave us for other things, other places, other spaces, other ministry, we make sure that they go forth with our blessing and that we acknowledge both a beginning and ending in this congregation. So before me, of course, is a loaf of bread, all of which is to symbolize, Duane, that we send you forth with so many blessings and so much goodness. And as someone who has uh, nurtured um, a gaggle, as we say, of interns here at Epiphany, uh, we've had some really good interns, but you are certainly one of the best, one of the most detailed, one of the most um, thoughtful, one of the most um, on top of it. So much so, times he has put me to shame. So I said to him, this has to end. You're out of here. I'm just kidding. Actually, he's going to great things. I hope you'll stick around in the Zoom setting to hear that. He has been a blessing to this congregation, and you uh, join with us in a sort of moment in which, you know, interns have never had this kind of internship in the history of the 2,000 years of Christian ministry, but I'm glad that we got to spend it together, both as a congregation, as colleagues. Uh, thank you for the way that you nurtured Epiphany through this time, uh, the way you were faithful. And thank you for the good gifts. So I give you, on behalf of Epiphany United Church of Christ, bread for the journey. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. And uh, thank you, Epiphany. Um, it's been my honor to be, start my pastoral 
discernment process, especially actively in a ministerial role here at Epiphany. And for that, I am truly welcome. Even though we may not have been face to face, I have never doubted your presence among us, even today and even now. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your feedback. And I, as Pastor Kevin said, I will welcome that, uh, share a little bit more about what's going to be in store in the years coming up. But I particularly want to thank, again, uh, Philip and Justine and Tim for their beautiful music ministry of music that's been here every week with mm -hmm. me, has been here. And also for you, Fiona and Jeff, the working behind the scenes that have allowed me to be present with you virtually in making those times special. And Brother Kevin, I am thankful for you inviting me into this discernment and into this exploration of ministry in the United Church of Christ and in the larger ch church universal. Thank you for bringing me in. For that, I am eternally grateful. Well, you're certainly welcome. Uh, can Lenore, could you come up here for a second? We uh, also say a prayer, okay? I also just want to quickly thank the, uh, the team here at the church that gave you feedback throughout the process. There's always a small team in the background doing a lot of great work, working with our interns, and that is uh, certainly the case here. So we thank them for their faithfulness to this good ministry. Lenore, thank you for letting us borrow him on Sunday mornings, okay? All right, let's pray. Gracious and living God, we thank you for the goodness of this day, for the spirit that infuses your church and gives us gifts, gifts like Dwayne and Lenore. May you bless him. May you bless the congregations he will serve in the future. May you bless his ministry for many years to come. We thank you for your faithfulness to the church, to this church, your faithfulness to him and Lenore, and to all the ways you just continue to show yourself in this world. Holy One, Send all that you are upon him. Give him grace, mercy, and wisdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, brother. I'm sorry. I'm going to get a hug real quick, okay? Okay. Sorry. I promise, folks, we've been vaccinated, okay? <laughs> Lenore, thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Hear now these words of benediction. You were here, I say, remember your baptism. The baptism in the water, in the wind, in the spirit. Now may our creator, our redeemer and sustainer, who nurtures those fruits within us and the love that you share in the world beyond, be with you now and forevermore. Amen.